Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Alan Arnett, owner and curator of Parkview Health and Wellness Center, a natural and holistic healthcare center located in Long Beach, California. And welcome to today. Today is part three of an ongoing series that we've started on cleansing and detoxification. Today we're going to cover the subjects of juicing, teas, and waters. We've already laid down the foundation of what detox and cleansing can be, and we've already laid down the foundation of what whole foods are, which is the foundation of any cleansing. So please go check out those videos if you've not seen those. Today we're focusing on juicing. It's a very important topic and has been around for a number of years, and sometimes there's confusion about it, but mostly we all need inspiration to keep it going. So the first thing I'd like to start with then is the definition of juicing. Juicing is separating. When we separate the fiber from the juice and drink only the juice, that's the definition of juicing, particularly of vegetables or fruits. The definition, therefore, of blending is mixing the fiber and the juice together. So imagine putting a whole orange in your blender and blending it up versus putting your orange through some type of squeeze and then letting the juice only come out. That's the fundamental difference. They both have value and they both can be helpful. But today we're covering juicing, so the specific of removal of the juice, separating it from the fiber. But it's important to know something. For the most common form of juicing out there is fruit juicing. Most people grew up with orange juice or apple juice is one of the key things we taught kids to drink. Turns out, bad idea, at least in bulk. And we'll go over that in a moment. So fiber regulates the sugar. So when you have the fiber in the orange and you eat the orange, it regulates by, by time how much sugar comes into your system, allowing your body to moderate the sugar. When you separate the fiber from the juice and the juice only goes into your blood, there's a big rush of sugar, nothing to regulate it. So if juicing fruit, you need to know that fructose will enter your system without regulation. And it's that without regulation that turns out to be the problem. For there have been any number of studies that show when children eat an apple, their blood cholesterol tends to go down. And when they drink apple juice, their blood sugar and blood cholesterol tends to rise. Because the difference there is the fructose. We now know that. It doesn't mean we won't have fruit juices, but we certainly aren't going to do only fruit juices for any type of health act. All right, fiber also feeds the microbiome. That's a new term for some of you. You may know it as the friendly bacteria in your gastrointestinal system. It's also known as the major part of your immune system. Turns out the little bugs in there, friendly bacteria, friendly yeasts, and so forth, they eat mostly fiber, certain types of fibers. But when there's no fiber, then the bacteria don't get to eat. And so what happens is fiber is removed from processed food to preserve it. If I just take out the fiber of any product, then that product's going to last longer because it's not feeding the friendly bacteria. So fiber then is an important understanding even though in juicing we're going to separate from it. But it, So when you're making juices, it's important to know that we always need them freshly made. When we make fresh open packets of juicing, fresh from the fiber, there's living biological activity. In the natural world, we call that living or natural enzymes. Actual chemists hate that word because they see it a different way. But in the clinical setting, we call it living enzymes because it's fresh and hasn't been made. And so it interacts with us very well. It helps to break up mucus in our digestive system. It helps to increase the function of the gallbladder and liver and digestive system in most cases. So it is important that when we get it not freshly made, the one thing they've done is pasteurized it. Now when you pasteurize any product, it's gonna kill the living enzymes. Again, I know that's a funny word, but go with me for today. And it also has a tendency to kill any living microbiotics. Microbiome, friendly bacteria, probiotics, whatever word you like to use there. So that means it kills the life out of the product and you're left with only the sugar and the nutrients. Now that may have flavor and it may be decent for whatever purpose, but if we're gonna use juicing, we need to know that that's not what we're after. You can't walk into a store and buy pre-packaged products that have already been pasteurized. And here's the hint. If it's in the refrigerated section and it doesn't say the word raw, it's been pasteurized, guaranteed. Too many lawyers want these products pasteurized so they can last longer on the shelf. So we always need them freshly made. We need to get them never pasteurized and only use organic because really you're consuming a high concentration of this and you don't want to be bringing in pesticides and residues. Now that means that the best thing to juice therefore is going to be our vegetables. Vegetables have a lot of water in them, some more than others. 
they are not as flavorful to the uninitiated juice person and so they may need to be balanced with some fruits and we'll talk about recipes in a moment but go with me on this little journey vegetables become the number one thing to juice when i was a kid in the 60s and 70s my hippie parents started doing carrot juicing a long time ago and it was for all the same reasons we're doing it today it concentrates the blood of the juice it gives us rich vitamin a beta carotene in the living system that digests really well so we do know that carrot juice is good but what could we do because carrots have a little bit of sugar although no fructose you notice how it has the greens in that picture that's why i like this so when you use the tops of the greens or beet tops or parsley or any of those other greens it can help to moderate the sugar not exactly the same way as fiber moderates the sugar but functionally it can help certainly in juicing these are some of the better juicing uh, vegetables uh, cabbage probably number one Cabbage is excellent for our body and has a unique vitamin, as I've heard it, called vitamin U, and it lasts for about 30 seconds. Once you've juiced it and it hits oxygen, it denaturates so quickly that before you've gotten it in your body, if you've waited two hours, you're going to miss it. Yet it can really heal ulcers. I think that may be why it was called vitamin U, and I stand to be updated if someone has new information. Nevertheless, raw cabbage juice has been known throughout a lot of the world to really heal upper digestive systems. Celery. Celery juice we know is high in potassium and is one of the number one juices for reducing blood pressure, for stabilizing blood pressure, for it not only helps the blood pressure, it helps the blood vessels as well. Parsley. This is a blood cleanser, a liver cleanser. What does that mean? It tends to att attract itself or attach itself to things like heavy metals, radiation factors that are floating around our blood. Parsley and cilantro have been used in uh, radiation treatments uh, to reduce that within the body. Now green apple you may think is a little funny. I made that thing about fruit. We do need to make the juicing palatable and by going green versus red or yellow we reduce the natural sugars and give a little bit of sweet so that something like this becomes much more palatable. Now once you're more familiar with juicing you can omit the apple altogether. Apple does have benefit in a small quantity. Beets and beet tops. Now beets are a natural sugar within the vegetable kingdom, but typically if we'll juice them with the Greek beet greens, the, the, the big leaves on top, we not only get more nutrients, we not only get more blood cleansing, it again helps to balance the sugars within a drink. But beets also make a familiar taste that can be blended with other things to make a vegetable juice itself more palatable. If I had orange juice versus beet juice, I would choose beet juice because it would be more naturally healthy for me than the orange juice. Now this is an interesting combination. Kale, which is a dark green leafy vegetable, rich in minerals uh, and rich in potassium and magnesium, very good minerals for ourselves also has the classic greens bitter taste. So when we can take another healthy green like mint leaves and add it to the juicing, we get that flavor balance that starts to bring in some positive traits. Plus mint itself as a fresh leaf has other healthful qualities, bioflavonoids, uh, the uh, aromatic quality to fresh mint helps to open and lift the gallbladder and stomach. That's why we use mints as an after dinner mint. Spinach is probably the most popular green that is added to other smoothies and such. It is excellent as a juicing vegetable, but remember anytime you use leaves, you're probably going to need to use a lot of them to get a decent amount of juice. But with that said, you don't need to drink a ton of juice. Nature kind of shows you how much of the juice you want to drink. If it takes a big wad of spinach to make a little juice, then nature says you don't need a lot. If you can put celery and carrots through something and get a big lot of juice, nature says you can drink a larger quantity. So when we create recipes, that's how we put them together. Here's a few simple straightforward juices. The top one is the most familiar that has been around forever and that's tomato juice. But it would follow our rules here of being freshly made, not pasteurized, and organic. Made by yourself out of vegetables in your garden, it can be a terrific blood cleanser and tomatoes tend to be very good for the male prostate issue as they have lycopene in them. But also cucumber juice by itself or mixed with other juices is a flavorful way. Typically during the summer those feel really great as it's high water content. Beet juice is a little concentrated. I don't know someone who would drink that much straight beet juice, but I tell you it certainly tastes good. And then lastly would be the carrot juice. Carrot and beet when mixed together will almost please any taste bud. 
But be careful, that's where the sugars in the vegetable kingdom come from. So we'll want to blend those with the dark green leafy vegetables. All right, so here's a drink. This is a sample that I found, and I actually like it because I think this would taste really good. Let's unpack this as a sample recipe. Oh, and by the way, I have many recipes attached to the website. So after this, if you'll go to parkviewwellness.com, you'll be able to find, I think there's about 30 recipes. I've attached a link for you that you can explore. So today we got celery. Now celery is one of my favorite juicing. If I'm juicing, celery is number one for me. It has so many positive qualities, but it also makes a lot of water and fills up a nice juice. Lemon. Lemon is a good balancer both of flavor, but also of the acid-base balance. Because while we're alkalizing the body, too much alkalinity is just as bad as too much acidity. And a little bit of lemon oftentimes creates that acid-base balance that makes juicing feel good in the body. Basil. This is like the mint in the previous uh, picture. This adds more flavor. You won't use much of it, but it will add a nice balance of flavor to the celery and to the lemon. These three right here would make a nice drink. But we can add more. We can in, uh, add mint if you like. That will double the minty flavor or leave that out. Lime instead of lemon or maybe use both if you have both. Creating a nice balance. And grape here is used. The green grapes would still be organic, unpasteurized, freshly made. You won't need a lot of them. But like the green apple in the other picture, a little tiny bit of that might balance the flavor. We're not making grape juice with a little celery. We're making celery juice with a little bit of grape. And lastly, here's an interesting thing, adding the fruit of an avocado, which has no sugars in them or very little sugars in them, will do several things to this type of drink. And the most important is texturally it will add a thickness to it that will make it feel more like a smoothie. Number two is it will make it last a little bit longer inside the body and certainly can be part of any day's worth of fresh vegetable juicing. All right. We do want to talk about fruits. Vegetables aren't the only things that we're going to use, but we've already stated that fruits have both fructose uh, as well as the general term sugar, so we want to use them judiciously since we're separating the fiber from them and using only the concentrated juices. So the most classic that everyone knows of is orange juice, and it is fresh orange juice that's better than pasteurized orange juice. All the major name brands in the grocery store then don't uh, are not approved of by the healthcare provider better ways to get calcium, far better ways to get vitamin C. So the only reason to drink that is because you've been entrained by the TV commercials that it's somehow good for you. I will tell you, if you're going to do orange juice, please make it freshly made. And if it's only orange juice, eat it with food so that there's some fiber and other nutrients to slow down the sugars. It can be part of a healthful breakfast. But what tends to happen is people tend to have orange juice and toast and cereal, and that's just way too many carbs uh, first thing in the morning. Nevertheless, it can be part of a flavorful juicing combination. Watermelon is an unexpected one, for while it is high in sugars, it has a natural tendency to create a great deal of water in our body and really useful in the summer for releasing a lot of water, reducing blood pressure, and releasing heat symptoms inside the body. Of course, if someone is sensitive to sugar, they would not have only watermelon. But if for some reason you're in the South and all you had was some watermelon, what you could do is actually juice the rind as well, or at least up to the green part and include some of this white. And that, what you could call the pithy part, it's not called pith, but the rind part, actually adds more balance to the sugars in the watermelon. All right, so here's some unexpected fruits that we would think, but tend to be a little bit better, a little bit lower on the sugar scale. Kiwi. Kiwi's a little bit tart. It has more of a lemon type flavor, so you'll want to use it judiciously. Apricot. Now, apricot to me is really quite delicious. It's, it tends to be thick. It doesn't make a great juice, or if you do it, you're not going to give you a lot of water. Therefore, nature says you don't need a ton of it, right? Okay, raspberries. They're kind of like the apricots, but raspberry juice, uh, I call it the kissing cousin pomegranate juice. They're both red juices. can be very healthful, rich with antioxidants as well. And then grapefruit. Now, grapefruit's a little sour, meaning there's not much sugar. Classic for weight loss in the 50s was drinking a thing of grape juice and suffering through the morning. I like to balance it. If you take like green apple, a little bit of lemon, mint, and some grapefruit, that makes an interesting fruit juice that's not too high on the sugar scale. So here's an opportunity to put some fruits together that have some degree of balance. We could take orange, which of course would be uh, peeled first and using only the inside of the orange. Don't worry if the seeds get in your juicer. Uh, it will extract that from it. 
uh, carrot here. But here we would balance this. If we're going to use both orange and carrot, you know, you're not going to use a ton of each. You still want to make a reasonable amount. Cucumber, as we've already said, is rich with water, and it adds a nice balance. It lightens up the heavy carrot juice. Green apple, not too much, maybe just a half. We'll add a balance of flavors. Pineapple and grapefruit. Pineapple, when fresh, is filled with bromelain, a very important enzyme for breaking up proteins in the digestive system. When not overconsumed, and when these sugars are balanced in the right way in a drink to where it's just that edge between tart and sweet, you're not going to raise your blood sugar terribly. Nevertheless, you could also add some greens to this. You could add some kale. You could add some spinach. And that would also bring about more balance. But this is how we start to blend some of these flavors for health. So therefore, juicing needs to be thought of in today mostly as a way to get in vegetable concentrated uh, liquids. We're going to highlight that with a few fruits to make sure it's palatable. And there are some benefits to fruit juicing, but they're so overweighed by the sugars that we just want to be very cautious with how much we use. The second subject that to me falls under the juicing concept are teas. We're not going into the benefits of teas, we're just reminding you that it's basically liquid with a fruit, or in this case, a root. If you were doing some type of juice cleanse or some type of juice fast, and we talk about fasting next week in our Facebook Live, ginger lemon tea is classic the world over. But when you're doing fresh vegetable juicing, it tends to be neutral or cool temperature. The stomach likes things warm, and to have some nice warm ginger or ginger lemon tea can create balance to a juice fast or a day of juicing. But maybe what you get from this whole presentation today is the reminder that this is even detoxing as well. Just drinking one or two uh, cups of this a day will bring about a nice change within the body and in itself might be your juice fast. Now here is a classic pseudo juice fast that many people have heard of, the master cleanse. It's a little extreme in the form that came out of the late 70s and early 80s. It can be helpful in the right way. But I do want to remind you that simple ingredients from your kitchen, lemon juice, maple syrup, cayenne pepper, and water put together can actually bring about an effect within the body that causes your body to start to cleanse. Remember that there's a difference between detoxification and cleansing. Go ahead and check out that first video on the introduction. This is classic, the word master cleanse. You could look it up on the internet. Uh, when you're looking at this not live, you could push pause and check out our recipe here if you want to use this. This is a per glass recipe and would need to make several glasses a day if you wanted to go this route. All right, the last subject for today is waters. This is a phrase I've made up. I'm not sure other people use it, but I find that anything we can do to stay connected to our, our hydration is going to move us along the cleansing scale. And so to me, just adding lime to water not even making like a tea, just putting slices of lime in a big pitcher of water, letting it sit there and drink that throughout the day, or like white lemon. I, I think of it sometimes as spa water, where you go in and they have those big terrines of water with slices of lemon, lime, orange, and maybe cucumber. It's not squeezed as a juice in the water, that's why I call it a water, not a juice. But these flavor the water so that people will drink more of it. It's a great way to refresh in yourself between the heavier and denser juices from the vegetables. And this would be something much lighter as well. And again, this holiday season, if you don't get to your juicing, you can just keep this around and keep this going through your body more. And you will bring up more cleansing, even throughout our food gauntlet disguised as love. Called the holidays. All right, another one is you could add mint to it. Now this is very classic. Normally we would add it to hot water and then the hot water would extract it. You could do that first if you like. But just throwing some fresh mint leaves and some fresh lime slices or wedges without squeezing it, letting it sit for about 10 minutes or so. I leave it room temperature on, on, on my kitchen and I just drink the water and when the water runs out I replenish it and let that just sit there. It gives a very, very light flavor but again it helps to open up the digestive system. There are many ways uh, and things you could do here that are just really simple, but I just gave you a few today to inspire you. So to put this all together, if you wanted to do some type of detox or cleansing using juicing, there are many ways you could go about it. But today I just want to give inspiration and a little heads up. If you want to know more specifically, there are many good books on juicing. And of course, I'm here uh, as a nutritionist, a chiropractor, an acupuncturist, an herbalist, of many decades, this is what I do for clients when they want a personalized approach or if they need, uh, they hit a block in the road and they need some help uh, privately. 
So here are my ideas for setting your own cleanse or detox using some juicing. First, put pencil to paper. Set your goals and set your intentions. What am I looking to do? Am I just looking to increase vitality? Do I have a medical condition that needs specific treatment? Or am I looking to just be with a group and do something lightly? Is my intention to go into a heavy release and healing mode? Or is my intention just to like maybe have a juice or two a day and just start incorporating it into my day? Make it clear before you start. That's the only way you'll feel successful when you're done. Set the length and intensity of what you plan to do with your juicing. If you've never juiced before, one of the things I recommend to clients is you pick one meal a day and replace it with fresh vegetable juicing. So let's say you ate breakfast, then lunch would be a fresh vegetable juice, and then dinner could be a normal dinner. This would be a way to start feeling how the juicing affects you if you've not done that. That also would keep the intensity relatively low. But if you're familiar with juicing and you're like, oh, I need a detox or a cleanse, then this is the type of thing. But set your intensity first so that you're not just in the middle of it going, oh, I'll do more or I'll do less. Go ahead and give yourself some guiding principles. And you want to decide what components are going to be in the cleanse. And I recommend all three. Green juices, highlighted with some fruits, teas, and waters throughout the day. Each vegetable juice, if you're going to replace it, is about 16 ounces. This is not government work here. It could be 12 ounces, it could be 18 ounces, but that gives you a close ballpark if you're going to replace a meal. Uh, and so we'll call that a serving size. And I recommend if you're going to do a juice cleanse that you want to do three to six servings a day. Three servings a day would be skipping maybe two meals, and six servings a day might be missing a whole day of meals and replacing with the juices. If you have a mathematical mind, you might be going, now wait a minute, I eat three meals, but there's six juices if I replace. It is true, the juices will go through you pretty quickly. You will not have sustained uh, satisfaction from lack of hunger. So the first day or two on a juice cleanse, we start to wrestle with our sense of hunger. So having a juice about every two to three hours on a day of juicing is gonna be much better for you if you've chosen that option. Then choose your length. Am I gonna do one day? two days or three days, set that up in advance. If you want to do longer juicing, do not start as a beginner. You need to be under the guidance of either just an experienced cleanser and juicer or someone like myself who can walk you through if you're going beyond that. And remember, keep the fruits low. They can be in there, but keep the fruits low, minding the sugar. Before and after your one, two or three day juice or your half day juice or your one meal replace juice, start to lighten up your foods. Start to lighten up on the snacks, go easy on the alcohols, go easy on the staying up late, and go easy on the bitching about other people inside your mind. And when you come off of the juice fast, you're gonna be much more open-hearted and open-minded and possibly more nice to people. So before you go back to crab apple, come slowly back into that. I hope you're liking my humor. As you come back into it, take one to three days to kind of come back into normal foods. It's not feeling good if you have this beautifully refreshed body and then the next meal you eat is a burger watching an angry movie while complaining with someone. It just kind of throws the whole works. You want to kind of ease back into life. And here's my favorite phrase. I've been teaching this for over two decades and it is still applicable here. How do I know what's right? How do I know what recipe I need? How do I know when to stop? You are going to discover that in whatever you put together. And here's your guiding light. Observe how you feel when you eat what you eat. That way you can bypass whether you like it or whether you don't like it or whether it's this or whether it's that or whether it's good for you or whether it's not good for you. Just start going into, well, how did that make me feel when I ate that? Typically, the first juice is good. Second juice is good. Third juice feels really thinning. And by fourth juice, where's my food? By the beginning of the second day, I feel like I have so much energy I can't see straight. My mind is loving it, but my old habit's going, where's the food? Because it starts to unveil things that if I'm not aware of how I'm feeling, I'm going to fall into how I'm thinking, and my thoughts are really just going to take me back into old habits. This is why sometimes it's best, if you're new, to use an experienced person upon the journey. So let's get some juices into our life. Even if you do nothing else but just add a juice in when you go to a Lazy Acres or Whole Foods, or maybe you get a juicer for Christmas and you start making some at home. You could add some teas as we've discussed, or even those simple waters. Anything in that direction is gonna help your fluids, is gonna help your hydration, and it's gonna help you start to feel better inside your body. Remember, you're 70% water inside, 
and every chemical reaction, including those of the pharmacological set, occur in water. To an extent, the more water you have, the healthier you're going to be. The exception would be pathological water due to disease processes. All right, our next Facebook Live is going to go the next step, which is about fasting. Fasting is not only going without food. It's usually the presence of waters. But we have so much updates on fasting that I really want to cover that separately. We'll discuss intermittent fasting. We'll discuss lengths of fast, the benefits and the cons. How should I know if I need to fast or not? That will all be next Thursday at the same time, same place. And so the recipes that are inspiring today will be found at my website, parkviewwellness.com. That's also where this video will be posted by tomorrow. It will be edited and put together a little bit better for you if you want to share it. But for those of you that are online with us now, I'm going to open up and see if there are any questions that I can answer while I'm here live with people. Yeah, so what are the benefits of juicing? I asked so. Okay, what are the benefits of juicing? The benefits of juicing primarily could be stated that most of the nutrients, except the fiber of the plant, are in its liquid form. So when we extract that juice from the fiber, we're concentrating the nutrients, not only the enzymes that I've discussed, but also whether it's got vitamins or minerals or various other factors, uh, bioflavonoids, antioxidants, all of those chemical elemental structures are almost always in the blood of the plant. Now, what happens here is that when we separate it from the fiber, we're going to get a lot more. How full would you be to eat eight carrots? Yet it takes about eight carrots to make a glass of carrot juice. So it is a way to get more concentrated carrot juice into your body because by removing the fiber, you won't be too full. Therefore, you've got to know a little bit about it. It's therapeutic in its effect. We don't just randomly keep drinking gallons of the stuff. In fact, if you've been in juicing for a while, you know if you drink too much carrot juice, you actually start to look like an Oompa Loompa. You start to turn orange. It goes away, but it takes a long time. Any other questions for today? Yeah, um, Shannon asks, when juicing beads, how much is too much, particularly concerning the liver? Uh, in including, specifically referring sugar delivery? Okay, we assume that. So, so the question is, when using the sugar-based vegetables, like beets, but also carrots, we don't really juice it that much, but onion has a surprising amount of sugar in it. Um, what you want to know is that you're going to start with that one when you're juicing and you're putting into your juice. I'm going to teach you ratios rather than specifics. Always juice your greens first. Get your glass filled mostly with the good stuff. Stir it up and then taste it. The next thing to add is your tasty things like your lemon or mint or basil. Give some flavor. Try it again. Can I drink this? Hmm, no, I really do want some fruit or in this case beet. So then the beet becomes the last thing you add to flavor tolerance. Typically, I tell people if, if a beet is about the size of a baseball, cut it into quarters and start with one quarter per glass. That's a good place to start. Now it is true on this specific vegetable, beet juice could be drunk as a whole thing, but that's usually part of a different cleansing program. If you're new to cleansing, don't drink a whole glass of only beet juice, but it's rich in iron, it's very healthfully absorbed, the iron, and so it's good for people. Athletes really benefit from this. Women who are fertile going through their menstrual years can be very much benefited by this. And then Silva, Sylvia had a question saying, can juicing help with graves? Okay, can juicing help with graves? So what she's referring to here at, at the very least is a medical question. Can we use juicing therapeutic to help a medically defined condition? In this example, she used Graves disease. Graves' disease is a disruption of the metabolism, uh, sometimes caused by autoimmunity, sometimes caused by genetic factors. So to keep it uh, simple for today, what I'm going to say is what vegetable juicing can do is normalize your physiology. So that implies that it can greatly help Graves' disease. Yet, to say it cures it would, would need much more discussion, and legally we're not allowed to say that. Remember that all diseases are trademarked by the Western medical community, and only they can cure them. So we can't say things that fruits and vegetables can cure it. But what you're specifically asking then is maybe which vegetables would be best for something like Graves' disease. Well, Graves' disease 
really needs to be low on the cruciferous vegetables. So the things I emphasize, like the cabbage and the celery and the kale, use some but low amounts of. What you want to use more of that is going to be your celeries and your carrots, some degree of beets, and the other kind of vegetables that make up the cucumbers, um, my mind is drawing a blank, lemons, those types of things which are less in the cruciferous family metabolically that interacts less with Graves' disease. But this type of question can go on with every disease title. That's where if you'll go to the internet and go Graves' disease and juicing or what vegetables should I juice for Graves' disease, you're going to start finding independent websites that are more focused on that individual disease process and can be very helpful. Excellent question. Crystal um, had just a comment, juicing for severe constipation. Juicing for severe constipation. So in this case, again, it falls under the using it now therapeutically for a condition. Well, what she's kind of asking is which vegetables or which fruits do best for relieving constipation. The, the problem is the word severe to me in my medical mind goes, you know, we probably have a lot of things going on, but I do want to keep it simple and very inspiring and fresh vegetable juicing can be part of a good bowel relieving situation. The way juices help, because remember there's no fiber, is by opening up, that's a general term, the liver and gallbladder. So any fresh vegetable juice that's going to improve liver function, gallbladder function, and stomach acidity when eating food is going to have a positive impact on helping chronic constipation start to move through the body. Those again would be everything that benefits the liver. Go to the internet and go, vegetables that are good for the liver, because there's a long list, and they are celery. Um, uh, dandelion greens, carrots, of course, uh, acidifying it with lemon and or lime, that will get you started. Excellent question. Sherry had a question saying, can garlic and or ginger be included in a cold juice or used solely in warm beverage? Excellent question. The question to repeat so everyone could hear it is, can garlic and ginger be used in these drinks or these juices or can they only be used in like a warm drink? The answer is they can be used in this and they can be freshly juiced as well. In fact, that pointed out to me just now as the question comes, I should have put that up in there. Garlic is nature's blood thinner. Garlic is nature's blood antibiotic and antifungal. It is so helpful for our blood that unless you have a genetic allergy to the Allison family, it is important to get that in. It's a strong taste, so we start with one clove per vegetable juice and build up to tolerance. Likewise with ginger, start with a piece about the tip of your pinky finger. You don't need to clean uh, or scrape the ginger, but you do want to clean it, get the dirt off, and start with that. It's a great deal more medicinal value to any vegetable juice that we may be drinking and would move it more towards that direction to help with the constipation and even help to bring down inflammatory factors like Graves' disease. But garlic and ginger are also the things that have more of a medicinal taste. They're not so easily brought in. So if you're making vegetable juice for children or other people in your family who aren't interested in health but are willing to drink whatever you make, those you might want to start low with or leave them out until you train them, how, taste their flavor buds, uh, how to get used to this type of uh, taste palette. Excellent question. Thank you. And I think, um, what juices can I use when gallbladder has been removed? Okay, if the gallbladder has been removed, what you have largely have, let me restate the question, what kind of juices can I use if my gallbladder's been removed? When the gallbladder's been removed, what you've lost is the titration system for bile. Bile is made in the liver in large quantities and then stored in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder, based on stimulus, uh, chemical stimulus in both the mouth and the stomach, will then give the right amount. It titrates the amount of bile that goes into the stomach. After about six months to a year, most people who've had gallbladder removal will start to have a more even flow of bile. It's almost as if the body starts to regulate. But what's going to help the gallbladder is to make sure that the liver does not get congested and that the stomach has enough acid when you're eating so that food gets digested. There is a common misconception that if I'm having acid stomach that I should eat less acid. In most cases, that makes more acid later on. That's a whole other subject. But since that was the question, the juices that tend to help uh, when you don't have a gallbladder are things that regulate bile flow. Again, we go back to the dandelion greens, we go back to celery, even to some extent green apple. And if you're not having problems with the cruciferous, here's where your kale and your cabbage can also help out a great deal. Great question. Oh, and lemon. Yeah, also, is. Um 
can, since I started juicing, I found out when to cheat fast food and it's not satisfying anymore. Do you have any comment on that? Okay, as I understand the question, I used to eat fast food and now I started juicing and I don't like the fast food anymore or it's not feeling satisfying. Uh, yeah, welcome to yourself. You know, welcome to reality. I don't want to go off on it, but uh, if you know me, you know I could really spin a big yarn here on the processed food industry and their intensity towards getting you to become addicted to flavor palettes, salt palettes, savory palettes. It's really incredible the amount of time and energy and money and attention to make people become addicted to things that ultimately don't serve them. Nevertheless, you have more wisdom in the cells of your body than whatever they've come up with in the food manufacturing profile. So once you go off of those highly processed foods and you start getting your body working right through natural foods, when you go back to the processed foods, they oftentimes don't feel as good. And that's just the truth. Doesn't mean we won't eat it from time to time, but really a lot less because it doesn't feel good. That's my comment. Observe how you feel when you eat what you eat. I'm just going to put it back up here because I do think that that's such an important line that I think it's helpful for us to start to conclude. Do we have another question? Um, yeah, just... Um, Nutribullet for juicing, and can you add good fat, for example, coconut, olive oil, and juices? Okay, so two questions bound into one. Excellent questions, though. Could I use a Nutribullet? So the Nutribullet brings into that opening statement the difference between juicing and blending. A Nutribullet is a blender. So if you put the spinach and the celery in there, it's going to blend it up and make you what's called a smoothie, in my opinion, because you have both the fiber and the juice all mixed up right there together. You're not going to be able to get a true juice. You would need to juice uh, the celery and you need to juice the vegetables separately, pour that into a blender, and then you can begin to blend that up with these healthy fats that you're talking about, such as avocado, uh, coconut oil, or olive oil. When you use the healthy fats blended with juices, you want to make sure not to use too much and again taste it until you get that right uh, feel for you. Excellent question. And I think we're... Okay, these have been really great questions. It is the question and answer that usually brings this stuff to life. If I could conclude by saying anything, I have to tell you out of all the things you can do in the cleansing world, juicing teas and waters become the easiest to do and they give a lot of health. But everything that's good also has a potential side effect that you need to know about. That's why we went over the sugars and the fiber first. And even you could get too much green vegetable juice at some point. Alkalizing is just as dangerous as acidifying if it's in extreme forms. What brings about health is balance. So to conclude today, I do want to remind you that next Thursday at the same time, we're going to have our next Facebook uh, live, and this will be the last in our four-part series on cleansing and detoxification. Uh, that will also then be posted on our website if you're unable to make that. Today's recipes are going to be loaded on the website, which is parkviewwellness.com. Sorry for jumping around. I want to get that for you. Parkviewwellness.com. And to know that Facebook Live is going to immediately be posted on Facebook, my Facebook page, as soon as we are concluded. All right? Now, what we're trying to do with these Facebooks is to get people inspired about their health. Please like us. Please share this. It's not just that it benefits us, but it does. It's that we really want to get this out. We need to build a community of people who are like-minded. For when more people think the same, it's easier to remain healthy. The number one enemy of health is stopping your health practice and the most common reason is because they're not doing it and I want to be with them. So let's be with other people and let's stoke our health through food and through other means such as yoga and breath work. From my heart to yours and from my professional mind to your mind, may we all be healthy. Look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Take care everybody.